First off, uh, thank you to all the folks that came out and stayed to the end. I know everybody's frustrated. No one's more frustrated than we are. Uh, got used to a lot of success last year, and, and right now I haven't seen it, but a lot of people came out, fans, student section. Thank you. Uh, this, guy's, this group of guys still trying to get better. I am extremely proud of how hard we played with the passion that we played with. I thought the defense did a great job keeping us in it for a while. Uh, just We just didn't execute nearly well enough, especially on offense, to uh, – to really have a chance to win. And we had some yards, but couldn't finish. Turnovers kill you. But uh, the the energy and passion which we play with is something to build on. If we'd have had that two weeks ago, I think we win a game. We didn't. It showed tonight, and it gave us a chance to compete with a good team. I think uh, Marcus has got a really good football team right now. They're running the ball really well, play action off of it. Quarterback's executing at a high level. So, I mean, you got to give them credit. They earned the win. But uh, I was – I was pleased with what I saw. I response to last game out, how poorly we played, how lifeless we played at times. That changed over the last two weeks. That's a step in the right direction. But we've got to get execution as well. And we didn't get it in the areas that we needed to. Made a few plays, made a few big plays. But uh, they didn't turn it over. We did. Uh, and uh, we couldn't finish when we had to to get it to a 10-point game. Came up short and, and really, you know, too little, too late. So... Uh, short week against BYU. It's going to be a huge challenge. We got to build on what a few things we did well. Try to get better this week and find a way to put it all together in one game and see if we can get that done. What questions do you have? So, coach, earlier in the week you said Bonner was going to be on a short leash. Stuck with him through some interceptions. Like, where you seen after his last two games? Just keep it on. I would tell you when we watch tape, uh, some of that, some of those are desperation type situations um, where jump ball tips type situations. If I felt like he was making a ton of bad decisions, we would have changed. He ran the ball when he needed to, moved the chains with his feet, something we haven't seen him do. When we put him in situations to work through progressions, he was doing that well. And we'll go back and watch the tape. There may be some things we missed, but gave Coach Tucker the opportunity to change uh, quarterbacks midstream, and he felt like he was making good choices. So he took ownership uh, Tuck took ownership of, of one of the picks, put him in a bad situation, he needed to have a good answer, and, uh, and, and good play by the defense. So... Uh, some of them, the numbers are a little skewed, throwing the ball up deep in the last second of the half, uh, pushing the ball downfield in a one-on-one -on -one situation, hoping that we can make a play and their corner makes a better play than we do. So I, I would kind of reserve the right to watch the tape and see if, if we're seeing the same thing once we re rewind it back. Uh, and then we'll make decisions moving forward. Coach, you know, pretty quickly last year, did he take a physical meeting? Yeah. Is he taking a mental meeting right now? I, I, I think this entire process has been one. Um, I, I thought he looked uh, way more confident in the pocket today than he has in the last month. Uh, him pulling the ball down and moving the change with his feet a few times is something that we haven't seen since last season. Uh, he's frustrated, like we all are. I mean, he, he puts a lot of pride and energy and effort into this. So, yeah, I think he has. Now, uh, he did some really good things tonight, too, that gave us a chance that we just didn't do enough. And we collectively, as a group offensively, we've got to execute better. I mean, we don't. We don't move the chains on third and one. We don't move the chains on fourth and two. I mean, that has nothing to do with who's taking snaps. Uh, he's got to play better, too. And, and there's some areas I think he obviously can. So, Coach Anderson, obviously you cleaned it up after halftime, but there were just far too many penalties yep. in the first half. Yeah. Uh, too many of a 15-yard variety. Yep. What do you ultimately need to do to, to you know, get yourselves, not put yourselves in those situations? You know, we we got to have some discipline right there. I mean, we – we talk about it all the time, and obviously we, we have disciplinary measures in place on a daily basis to try to avoid those situations. The passion and energy of tonight, it was a chippy game uh, going in from the very first snap. We had some guys that, that didn't respond well. I mean, and also we had some staff members that didn't either. And, and that's stuff that you know I got to get control of from the head coach down. So um, it's frustrating to watch. It doesn't help our calls. It puts us behind the chains. It puts us in – Bad situations, and it's one of the first places we got to make, you know, make some corrections. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, um, with it being the mental health preparedness week, that was a, a great uh, initiative. I'm, I'm just wondering how you feel like the football men mentally prepares your players for life. I mean, it's it is life. I mean, you you can only control so much. You've got to respond to adversity every day. Uh, call doesn't go your way, ball doesn't bounce your way, injury, you name it. And it's 
it um, it prepares you probably as good for life as anything else that, that I that I know of, maybe other than the military. And and we teach life lessons every day. And how do you how do you carry right now when things aren't going the way we want, and and people are frustrated with you on the inside of the building, on the outside of the building? How do you respond? And I always tell them, you know, lean on Christ, lean on each other, and 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 keep working. And so we're trying to do that. We're trying to do that, but that's a lot easier to say than it is to do for a 17, 18, 19 year old kid that uh, puts his heart and soul into it and you're not getting the results that you want. So we're going to, we're going to pull together. We're going to lean, lean on each other and, and, and keep fighting. And hopefully we'll get there sooner rather than later. What you got? Yeah. What's your thoughts just on the wide receiver career? It seemed like there were times no matter how time to throw it, but just nothing was really developing. Maybe it seems like that you get separation. Uh, I thought we did a better job tonight than we did uh, a couple weeks ago in terms of man coverage. We, um, you know, we fought through some of the collision type coverage that, that we really struggled with two weeks ago, made a couple competitive plays that, that I haven't seen us make in the last couple weeks. So, you know, baby step forward, maybe in that sense, hard to tell till we watch the tape. Are there some other areas that, that we just weren't on the same page with quarterback? Um, I, I know he had a bad night in terms of throwing, throwing picks, but, it's it's not always a quarterback. That's what I want to watch. Is he making good decisions? Are we not in the right places? Are, are we not uh, on the same page? If that's the case, those are things we got to clean up. Now, if he's just making bad choices, throwing picks, that's a different problem. Uh, but you know, the the way we throw and catch is a lot of people involved. So that, that's I'm kind of anxious to see what it looks like on tape. Ah. Uh, Staffers need to let me deal with the with the officials. They need to they need to be quiet and coach my guys. And got some guys that got fired up tonight. Obviously, everybody's frustrated and wanted to wanted to bring energy to the sideline. And there's a there's a fine line. And had several times tonight that I got to deal with coaches being quiet, moving back, coaching their guys, and not screaming at the officials. I get paid to do that. They don't. And that's something that's going to get addressed this week. Coach, sorry, got to ask you about Seti. I mean, it didn't look good. Yeah, any, no. any idea what the official? Um, dislocated ankle uh, was it's back in place, but probably as as you would expect, there'll be some damage there. I would assume he's done for the year and probably going to need surgery to repair ligaments. That's pretty typical with that that injury. He was out doing an injury this week. He had a high ankle sprain last week, and wasn't able to go. We hoped he would be able to. And I would ex excuse me expect by Thursday he will, but he would not have been very effective tonight. Coach, you mentioned that you like the effort level that you saw out of your defense today. Um, when you and LB came in, obviously you played with a prolific rushing pack, yeah. and you were able to limit them to 103 yards. Yeah. What specifically did you see that you liked and that you want to see uh, moving forward? You know, I, I thought we we uh, played downhill really well. I, I, I didn't I didn't feel like we did a great job of that uh, a couple times this year. Felt like we were kind of waiting and catching. We played downhill tonight. We took the fight to them. Challenge our guys with being more physical than them up front. And for most of the night, we were. Um, we, we still gave up a couple big plays and some one-on-one -on -one situations that we got to continue to get better at. But to take a team that's that big up front and runs the ball as well as they have all the way up until tonight and to be able to control that part of the game, that gave us a chance. Then we had to make them one-dimensional uh, and, and then defend the pass. We didn't do as good a job as we needed to there in some areas. But uh, in terms of being physical up front, playing downhill and tackling. Uh, I thought we did a better job of that tonight maybe than we have all season. Coach, you talked about how you obviously need more discipline on this team. It starts with you. I'm curious how you can instill more discipline when you're going through the losing struggle. It's human nature probably to lose discipline when teams aren't going well. Uh, I mean, it's a challenge every day. We're not going to – we're not just going to pick up and change everything. This is the same approach, the same daily approach that we've taken all last year that worked for that group. Uh, very similar approach that I've taken my entire career in terms of what our daily measures are and holding guys accountable. We're going to keep doing that. But, uh, but also, you know, if guys are repeat offenders, taking things in their own hands and doing things out of character, then at some point those guys got to not get that opportunity again. And so we may be in that situation with some guys I don't know. Again, I don't want to jump to conclusions. But we, we clearly um, have to be more disciplined and have to be more uh, composed in an environment like tonight, which is what conference games are going to be. It's going to be chippy. It's going to be, it's going to be, you know, chaotic. So how do you, uh, how you teach from it? And if a guy is continually making those kind of decisions, you got to remove them from the equation.
And we'll see if that's where we're at yet. I don't know. We can stack, we can motion, we can create some um, concept situations where it's not isolated, where it's more about working through progressions, let the numbers work for you instead of one individual receiver. There's several ways we can attack it. Some of these guys are just getting better the more they play, haven't played a whole lot, but are starting to get better and better. Uh, so th there's a handful of ways you can attack it. And we need to look at all those and just try to create better opportunities for us to, to get guys clean. Yeah. At the end of the year, yeah. I just think efficiency on, on we're just not running the ball as efficiently as we need to. We're not throwing and catching and efficiently. I mean, part of tiring people out is being able to get the first down, get the first down, get the first down, and extend drives. And we're struggling to sustain drives. We're, we just don't show offensive consistency right now. Uh, this all works around moving the chains a couple times and creating tempo and making guys play longer than they want to play and extending the snap, you know, the, the play count. And if you're not getting that done, uh, it, it makes it, it makes it really difficult. I mean, 74 plays is not particularly high. And if we're not above the 80 number, then we're, we're, we're clearly not moving the ball like we need to. Say that again. Yeah, we got some of it. Not, not uh, you know, off the top of my head. Again, without watching it, probably, probably not. Obviously, not enough. Didn't, didn't do enough to get us in the end zone. So it's, it's definitely something we got to continue to look at. But um, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to say something out of frustration of losing the game and go back and watch the tape and, and be different. So I'm gonna. I'm going to hold my comment until I have a chance to really watch it. Coach, on that last drive, was it going for a touchdown of Holway? Did you consider spiking and kicking a field goal and trying to The outside? very last – oh, it had uh, – which drive are we talking about? The, the final drive. No, I mean, with the time where it was, um, you know, felt like we were in a position to, to go for a touchdown. Uh, I mean, we're down clock's way against you. Had we ha had that happen on the earlier drive, absolutely would have kicked the field goal to try to make it a touchdown game. At that point, no timeouts where we're at. Onside kicks are pretty low percentage. Uh, felt like our numbers were okay to try to uh, to try to score a touchdown. Um, you know, if, if that would have happened earlier in the game, probably been a different conversation. But with the clock against us as much as it was, no timeouts left. Didn't didn't make a lot of sense. Anything else? Thanks, guys. So, Charlie, you're going in, obviously, for Van Looney's out for the year. How do you feel like you did kind of stepping up in his place and kind of the starting lineup, so to speak? I felt pretty good uh, stepping up. You know, I worked hard all week. Well, off week we had two. So, it did really play a big role in that one. So, I felt prepared, ready to go. Charlie <laughs> made a really nice, uh, obviously, memorable, memorable kickoff return last time here. At you made some nice catches today for touchdowns. Uh, Appreciate that it. one over the middle, uh, you know, good hands there. Um, how much confidence do you feel you, you gained in that aspect of, of, of your game today? I'm, I'm always confident when I go out. I just had that mindset always, no matter who we play. Well, how do you feel the offense played today on the whole? I mean, we did better than last week. And then uh, they just came out. They're ready, you know. Uh, they executed well, everything. But I think we did. Uh, we made a step better. Do pretty good, yeah. <clears throat> it feels like in a lot of cases, separation is really hard to come by for this wide receiver four. Obviously, you got to get it sometimes, but it feels like the man coverage is a bit of a struggle sometimes. How do you guys create more separation as receivers? I'm um, just using our um, trusting our rules with the routes we have. So, yeah, well, just trusting our rules exactly. I say, I'm just playing fast too, it's a big role of it and being confident on the decisions you make. Well, it seemed like what you got on the big time pass, and you guys had some momentum uh, throughout the game, there's some momentum plays. Uh, what do you think it takes to build on those momentum plays to, to sustain a drive and, and to score more? Uh, what, what do you mean by that? Like on the offense side or? Uh, on, on the offense, yeah. Uh, we just got to execute, be smart with the ball. Just 
don't give up big plays like that, like we did. But um, just take what we can get. Don't be too greedy and stuff like that. Yeah. He's doing great. We're all, we're all uh, helping him up, giving you a pat on the back. In the back, we'll, we'll be good. Can you kind of emphasize the ways going here? The guy had such an incredible year last year. Battling for injuries and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just like, like I said, probably last week, um, it's just all new receivers. Like, he has to get used to us. We're, it's Kyle Van Leeuwen was out. Like, he's our starter, so like, I had to step up. So, it's just all be, we have to get a chemistry together. It's kind of, we're, we're there. I felt that this game that we, we combined it very well. Chemistry was kind of your guys' magic last year. Kind of right. Through the season, though. Is it going to be easy to pick yourselves up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always. Yes, sir. Drew, how frustrating was it to, it's part of football, you know. You win some, you lose some. Got to keep going, though. Always stay positive. Anything else for Terrell? Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I believe you were one of the first people running out there to, you know, once anyone's getting carted off the field. Like, what was that moment for you guys running out there and trying to support them? You know, it was heartbreaking. You know, anytime somebody on your team, especially, you know, a brother in our room, um, gets an injury like that, you know, you're worried for them and you care for them a lot. So um, as soon as we, we could, we ran up over there and see see how he was doing. And he was real positive like he is, you know. He's always a, a really positive guy. And yeah, so I'm glad that he's okay. And um, I pray for a fast recovery for him. Ollie, what do you think the mindset of the psyche of the team um, we just got to get better. You know, there's a lot of good things that we did. Um, I'm very proud of the passion that we played with and how hard we played. On, um, but, you know, there's there's also a lot of mistakes. So just working on eliminating the mistakes and getting better um, week by week, um, and we'll be good. Allie, how, how pers- personally, how are you feeling right now? Obviously, you would think that this year you had a good, had a good game tonight, obviously. It's made a difference out there. I mean, you know, I'm grateful that I had a, a pretty good game, but at the end of the day, it's about winning. And um, it's just heartbreaking that we weren't able to get the W. But um, like I said, there's a lot of good things we did. We just need to keep working as the weeks go on and eliminate our mistakes. Can you speak a little bit about some of your adversity, specifically in your defensive fronts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, another a real key role that we lost was uh, Phil Paya. You know, he's he's out for the rest of the season, and um, you know, not not being able to be 100% in the room is is kind of hard. But I'm very proud of the younger guys that stepped up. You know, especially Tavian Coleman and Bo Miley. They've been doing an amazing job um, stepping up and and playing for us. You know, they were, they were thrown into the fire, especially Bo. Um, Tavian was was already um, going to see playing time, but you know, Bo Miley, he really stepped up and showed no fear. You know, he's a tough kid. Everybody in that room is tough, and um, yeah. So I'm I'm really proud of the young guys. How do you feel like um, your players only helped help the defense this time? <clears throat> I think it helped the team, um, not just the defense. Um, having a players only meeting, you know, we brought everybody together and we kind of was talking about what we thought was wrong um, and what we could do better. So um, that was a very good, a very good step to where we want to go. You know, I, I personally, I feel that our team, we played better than we did two weeks ago. You know, maybe if we played this good two weeks ago, we, you know, it would have been a different result. So um, I'm very proud of our team and I know that we're going to get better as the weeks go on. I think my biggest take, positive takeaway from this game is just your rushing team tonight. Robin is a big physical back. Yeah, he they're, is. They've been a good rushing team for several years now. Mm-hmm. You guys followed them up, you know, basically for the entire game. So uh, how, much, how much can you build on that? And how, how good is it to see you guys take a, you know, a big step forward yeah. in that, that aspect of the game? You know, I'm really proud of the boys and how we played, you know. Um, Weeks prior, we we didn't do too well against the run, and like you said, you know, all credit to UNLV. They they have an amazing rushing attack. Credit to Coach Woods and everyone else involved. Um, yeah, we did a good job. We just came out with the right mindset, you know. Especially coming off of a tough loss a few weeks ago, we we had a chip on of our shoulders um, coming into this game, um, trying to prove prove people wrong and prove that you know we're as tough as we think we are. Yeah.
this game. He got to run field a lot, and especially a guy that scrambled a lot at 100 yards last game. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the game plan there, and how do you think it um, you know, yeah, like you said, he's a, a very mobile dual threat quarterback and just watching film, he's a good quarterback. Um, you know, we knew he was going to run the ball, so we, we really prepared this week. Our, scar our scout team uh, quarterback, Chase Tuatangalo, he did a really good job. He's actually scout team player of the week this week because he did a good job of showing us um, what he, he could do. You know, if, if things aren't open, he's going to get out and run, and he did a really good job. So um, credit to our coaches that coach the scout team, our defensive coaches, and, of course, Chase for helping us prepare for him. Uh, you heard Coach Anderson talk a little bit about um, you know, that just all comes with, you know, one, keeping people accountable and just, you know, learning from your mistakes. You know, we have a lot of young players. We have players that transfer that, you know, um, never played before. And them getting this opportunity, you know, sometimes it can, it gets chippy. And um, all we got to do is just keep them accountable. And, you know, the game's over, so we just got to learn from those mistakes and tell them we can't do that again, you know. So, yeah. There's a lot of football left. Sir, the yes. BYU yes, sir. Yes, yeah, very exciting, you know. Um, BYU is an amazing team. They've been a great program for the past few years. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, all, it's a rivalry game, you know. I don't know if they feel that way, but to us, we take pride in that. So um, I'm really excited to get back to the facility, come back here tomorrow and uh, prepare and, um, do our best to try and uh, defeat BYU, get that wagon wheel back. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.